We're here back at Paul Compton's house to look at all the amazing projects that he's got on board at the moment, and especially that red car in the background. Let's get into it. <laughs> So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? That is amazing. So we've got Paul here standing next to, what actually is it, Paul? It is a GTM. A GTM. It, it's, it's definitely got metro rear tail lights. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I did spot that earlier. So what is a GTM? Well, this, this comes out of a long history. There was originally a mini-based car called the Cox GTM, which used two mini front subframes yeah. with the engine in the back to make a mid-engine car. Uh, GTM stood for Grand Touring Mini. Oh, wow, okay. And then that wasn't terribly well sort of finished. The chassis weren't really built on a jig. They were more sort of built to lines on the floor. Yeah and somebody took the project on and just called it the GTM Coupe. And then when the Metro came along, they did the Rossa. Yeah. Which was the Metro-based version. Hence the uh, Metro rear lights, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, this is the K3, um, which used the Rover Metro running gear. Right. And in fact, they kind of did an MGF before the MGF was a thing okay. because that's a pair of Metro front yeah. subframes that makes the MGF. Yeah, because it's got that special suspension. Hydroelastic, is it? It's hydrogas. Hydrogas, right. So yeah. it's gas springs, not rubber springs, linked front to rear. Well, obviously this is electric, but I did notice that there's a, a bit like my TVR at the moment, there's an exhaust pipe hole. So what was the engine that uh, they used to put in these? Well, by this time it would be in the K series, um, okay. the Rover K series, which yeah. of course meant that they could people could fit the 1.8 VVC into them. Yeah, 160 brake, I think they are. Off yeah, top of head. so this yeah. one was built by students at Bradford University. Yeah. And has in, spent, in fact spent all, almost all of its life on a brake dyno. Right. So apparently they were using, using it for brake friction research. Okay. And so it was originally built in about 2007, and then it was converted to EV in about 2010. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. Um, using an AVT kit that cost about £8,000. AVT kit, where, where is that a particular company? Or? Uh, that was Alternative Vehicles Technology down in Somerset. Oh, okay, UK, that's good. And if uh, people don't know uh, Paul, uh, uh, he, he's been in quite a few videos of mine on lives and also when we come to see him and his projects before. And Paul has uh, got the notoriety of being on Scrap Heap Challenge as well. Uh, what episode was it, Paul? Remind us. Um, it was called ACDC Dairy Dash. <laughs> and it was basically converting vehicles to be driven around a motocross track whilst delivering pretend crates of milk. There we go. There we go. It was a, it was a great... If, if no one's seen Scrap Heap Challenge, it, it's so good. Go, go and check it out. And it's got Robert Llewellyn uh, now fully charged. Um, so, yeah, go and check it out. Really, really good show. So, they're the... Uh, the deep, uh, the deep batteries. <laughs> yeah, the, the deep cycle lead deep acids. Cycle, that's they're it. an absorbed glass mat, so they're good for very high discharge currents. Though these ones are pretty tired. I think some of them date back to about 2016. So how many kilowatt hours, because that's how I think of things, uh, is that in the front, roughly? Um, it's total is 9.6 kilowatt hours with the eight modules. So we've got the, uh, that's obviously for the air. Uh, that doesn't actually do anything. I just did not. Okay. No. Um, what was it for? It was for well, the Well, that, that uh, would normally be your heat, heater blower, yeah. but in fact, all it has is this little electric demist up oh, here, yeah. uh, which has the advantage of working instantly, but the disadvantage of only doing about four square inches of screen. Ah. Well, it's, it's in the right place for the driver. Yeah. So just as long as you don't want to turn left, you're right. Obviously, screen wash bottle in there, uh, some sort of electro alarm. You've got the uh, uh, steering fluid there. Is it power steering on this? No, they wouldn't have been. The steering on this is horribly heavy. Okay. Because of the, there would not have been any of this weight in the front. There'd have been of nothing course. up here about a radiator ah, yeah. and, a, and a storage compartment. So do you know roughly the weight of the batteries in the front there? They are 35 kilos each. What? 
35 kilos each and there are five of them. They are 30, are you serious? Yeah. Jesus, wet. <sighs> wow, okay. And so this... what's the total weight of this vehicle? I don't know the total weight. I think as a, a petrol engine with the K series, they, they're under 800 kilos. Right. It's a full fiberglass monocoque. Yeah. Um, you've got three more modules in the back. 30, wow. Okay, yeah. And it's, a mo it's an induction motor. It's an industrial induction motor that's been custom wound for lower voltage. Yeah. But I looked at the weight of that motor. That motor's rated 15 kilowatt continuous. Okay. 30 kilowatt peak. Right. Weighs 65 kilos. Right, okay. Which means it's at least 10 to 15 kilos heavier than a leaf motor. Wow, okay. Um, and it's on the original gearbox, which is just at the moment in third gear. Right. We, and what is the gearbox in that? It's the Rover K-Series gearbox. Right. So I think when we initially spoke of this vehicle, um, I think it was up for sale for a little while and, and you were kind of obviously uh, taking notice because it was a unique bit of kit and you thought, I'm guessing your thoughts were to update the batteries, right? Because that's a um, hell of a lot of weight. Well, the, the original plan was to replace the batteries and also to replace the motor and gearbox right. with a Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid rear motor. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I think the motor and gearbox weighs about the same as the existing motor. Okay. Um, and a BMW plug-in hybrid battery pack, which at uh, 12 kilowatt hours is just about 125 ki kilos. Okay. So not more than, so less than half the weight. Which you think, you know, with the less weight, more power, it's gonna make this into a really fun vehicle. And the entire BMW pack would fit where these three modules are. Right, okay, so you lighten up the steering, make it more fun. Yeah, it sound, sounds great. So now you've got it, how much of a job is that? Because we never, it's one of those things, isn't it? We have aspirations well, and uh, TVR aspirations I'm thinking of here, people. The um, thing is, the car, the car really is replacing my G-Wiz in terms of my going to the shop's duties. Right. And you. the performance is entirely adequate for that, even with the lead acid. Yeah. What I don't like about the lead acid is the stress it's putting on the, um, the tub. Yeah. And that is, in fact, why the rear screen is held in with tape. Yeah. Is because it keeps popping the bonding Right. And the tape will take the flexing. What's that down there? Is that the, That's the controller, controller and the charger and the contactor? I'm not sure if you can see that through the glass, actually. Oh, no, you can see it. So that, that there, that's the controller. There's a Curtis AC controller. Yeah. A Zyvan NG3 charger. Yeah. Of which I have a deep hate relationship, having used them before. And they're a very peculiar design. And how fast can you actually charge this? Because being lead acid, you'd think that you'd only be able to get in like, what, free, free? Actually, if I had the facility to, to fast charge this, I would be doing it yeah. because these batteries, they can take they it, actually can specified a minimum charge power. Oh, wow. If you want good cycle life out of them, they want them charged quite hard. Okay. And these are probably very lazy because they haven't. Yeah. Um, I've charged batteries like this before at three or 400 amps. Yeah. Um, and it actually really wakes them up. But this, the charge is actually turned down. The charge is capable of three kilowatt. Okay. It's turned down to 2.3. Yeah. Because that's all allow, you're allowed to pull continuously from a 13 amp outlet. Right. And what's the, uh, what's the kind of miles per kilowatt that you get on this roughly, do you know? I haven't worked it out. It's no. probably reasonably efficient. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, with the... Uh... Oh, it, there's, there's, there's big not a lot of here, it. There, isn't there? It doesn't get driven very fast because it's local roads where there isn't anything above a 40 limit. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, the main, the main thing I want to do by just changing to some lithium modules is get rid of all that weight in the front. Yeah. No, absolutely. Lighten up the steering and well, then uh, eventually with, the, with the, um, the Outlander motor in it, yeah. you know, that might be fun to do the odd um, sprint in it yeah because yeah. it'll be really quick with a very small 12 kilowatt hour pack and yeah and all that talk that'd be very exciting no i, I can't i can't wait to see the progress uh what, what have you bought this paul because you've got so many projects on the go as uh, you'll see now in the video we've got uh 
a Lotus Excel in bits, which you're steadily uh, refurbishing and electrifying. You've got the Lotus Esprit, uh, which you're doing something similar to, I believe. You've got another Lotus Excel, which uses a bit more of a daily hack, which is, uh, which is still petrol. You've also got your original electric Scirocco that you converted in 2000. It was on the road in about 2000. In 2000, yeah. again, full details of that in previous videos, so go and check them out. In fact, they'll be up here. There we go. But you've got another project, or is it a project? What, well, it's a running car. Ah, so so shall we go? Shall we take out for a run then? Yeah. Well, let's go then. Can you hear the controller? It's not that high pitched. Yeah. Eee. It's right there. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I got the perspex there. Okay. Oh, that's definitely a Rover Metro steering wheel. I quite, I quite like the. Um, I much prefer that than the rotary dial. Yeah, it's a little bit... Um, oh, it's, it is a bit like that, but I quite like it in that respect. It kind of works quite well. Because it was a university project not intended to be really driven, they cut a lot of corners in the build. Yeah. So they didn't buy the, um, the hood or the um, hood frame. Right. They always came with the hard top, but they didn't buy the hard top liner. And I'd forgotten just how bad Rover Metro steering lock was. I'm impressed that you can uh, navigate with these uh, very tight circumstances. So we'll here we go. Do you know what? It's, it's, I mean, these seats that you put in here, these MX-5s on, they are jolly comfortable, but it's quite a nice driving position, actually. It's not not bad, and the, um, the hydro gas uh, is actually quite compliant. Yeah. But it's got, uh, it's got decent torque, and I'm barely tickling the throttle. And it's just got lift off regen. Okay, yeah. It doesn't have um, any pedal regen. It could have. Um, it just hasn't been set up with a, uh, a potentiometer. All right, we're on the uh, slightly faster roads now, and it, it does feel it does feel really well settled. Although there is that little noise, uh, as Paul said, uh, with the rear window. Um, Pretty impressive to be honest. I can really see that this car could be something of. Uh, oh, here we go. It does feel nice through the corners. It does feel like there's some drifting opportunities around the corners as well. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we won't do that sort of thing. Yeah, I can imagine having a lot of fun in this. Have you got any kind of uh, time frame of uh, the lithium batteries and the motor and stuff? I know you've got about a million pro projects on the go at the moment, but... Yeah, I mean, I should be able to do the batteries fairly easily. Yeah. Um, do it in a day, because I can adjust the charger, and obviously I should not have come this way. I can just adjust the charger to work with everything being fairly conservative. Yeah. Um, so using the original charger? Using the charger that's in it, yeah, yeah. the NG3. Yeah. I shall need to, um, if I'm very conservative with the cutoff voltages, I can do without the BMS. Yeah. You know, just stay within a very, very safe window and uh, look at the voltages from time to time to see if everything's in balance. And I take it you go for air-cooled batteries, and what, um, it was the um, BMW hybrid pack you were... Uh, well, that's the ultimate. In the meantime, just four of the MGZS modules will get me close to the 96 volts that this oh, is running that's on. right. I should have picked up those blooming MGS uh, modules for you already. Um, well, next time I see you, I'll make sure I have them ready to go and I'll grab them off uh, Ralph. So, you know, Repurpose, recycle the batteries. Uh, got spare yeah. ones for the TVR anyway. Because oh, oh, that was that was pretty that was pretty speedy. That was up to sort of I won't say the speed because I don't know what speed is around here. But that it goes well, doesn't it? It's pretty decent considering it's only 30 kilowatt peak. Let me pull in here so I can get off the road here. And you can have a little go. Ooh. I won't say no. Okay, so simply, it's so all, is it already on? It's trip? literally ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Obviously, handbrake. Mechanical handbrake. 
the old classic handbrake. Forget these things. When you get used to uh, certain. Places. Oh, the throttle's nice. Mm. Oh wow, that's that's pleasantly surprising. That is, that is nice. Make sure, make sure I'm not going too slow, too fast. Oh yeah, I think you can have a lot of fun in this. The what I like the handling. What's the road holding like? Yeah, I mean it generates a fair amount of grip. Yeah. So what, what do you reckon? What do you reckon roughly? range-wise out of it at the moment you say about i think they were quoting 25 miles okay well for what you need it for as a daily that's other than the jaunt up to a you know charge head to me uh what have you yeah i mean i initially thought i would put the same weight of lithium in it as it's got lead right um which means i could probably put about 50 kilowatt hours in bloody hell that would that would have some serious range um but because of the way that all the weight in the front is flexing the shell. Yeah. Oh, it sounded like it was going to stall then. No. <laughs> I'm in the wrong gear. And like you said, it's in third gear. Yeah, it's locked into third gear. It came to me in fourth. Oh, really? Um, okay. I tried it in second, but the you end up with so much backlash in the drive line. Yeah. Um, that that becomes unpleasant and it can actually oscillate. Right. So third's a good compromise. Brilliant. No, thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Much appreciated. So I want to say thanks to Paul. Thank you very much for uh, inviting us down and thanks for showing us the very cool GTM you got there. And no doubt we'll see each other at an EV festival sometime soon. And on that point, EV festival on the 8th of September, charge heads, we've got a section there and we're gonna have some modified EVs some EV conversions, and maybe some charge heads merch. So hopefully I'll come down, uh, well, come down and see us. It's at Lutterworth EV Festival. Look it up, check out the socials, it'll be on the links.